Hamrun's mayor condemns Midnight Street brawl that left residents terrified. The FATF delegation is in Malta for its final review, and murdered Lasana Sisa's body still remains in Malta three years later. All this and more on Love and Daily. Hi everyone, Jonathan Chilia and David Greg Orpani here this evening. We've got some updates and a breakdown of today's top story. David is here with details on today's top story. Yeah, so first off, one of the biggest stories of the day, um, which started off with exclusive footage that we um, published ourselves on uh, our social media platforms. Uh, a massive fight broke out in the streets of Hamrun last night. Uh, it was near Mile End, so quite central, at around 1 a.m. Um, exclusive footage, you know, showed over a dozen people, some of them having wielding long pieces of wood and other sort of DIY weapons. It was it was quite unsettling to be honest to see those those sights, knowing you know that this is a quiet street, a, a, a quiet street not very far away from where you live, because everywhere is a couple of minutes away anyway. Um, we uh, contacted Hamrun Mayor Christian Samut and he has reacted to it, of course, condemning the fight that broke out. Um, and uh, he stressed that, you know, he hopes and expects the police to be stern with the perpetrators. Um, of course, he said it's absolutely unacceptable. I mean, various cars were, were damaged as well. There was quite a lot of commotion, actually, even though the footage that we uploaded seems to have been taken moments after the worst of the fight had broken out. It was still quite quite, quite um, uh, unsettling to see. Um, of course, the residents were scared, um, uh, not just according to some mood, but of course, very clearly. Um, and when asked about whether enough is being done, um, someone was very blunt and said, you can never um, do enough, um, clearly, to have such situations. Um, quite unsettling, John. I don't know whether you saw the footage, as in definitely not something that you don't want to be watching, knowing that, you know, this is in such a central place. Hopefully, um, enough will be done for this to be mitigated and not done again. Absolutely. And if you haven't seen the footage, you can find it on Love & Motors Instagram as well as our website. Um, just so you're aware, three people were injured in this incident. And I think a lot of people were worried about how fast the, the men kind of just appeared, you know. It seemed like the road was quite quiet and then suddenly you had dozens of people just appearing, some of them brandishing weapons. Um, so I do hope that police kind of look into this. This is not the first time we've heard incidents of nightly fights in Hamrun area. Um, so like the mayor said, I do hope that the authorities are very stern with anyone who thinks that they can fight in the streets of Malta. Um, moving on from a local issue to a more of a national issue, the Financial Action Task Force, but more often called the FATF, um, assessors have come to the island to assess the island to see if maybe Malta might be taken off the grey list in 2022. So the FATF delegation is expected to be in Malta for about three days, during which they'll be speaking to government officials and other kind of experts to determine whether the island has done enough to convince the assessors to get us off the grey list. Um, if you're not aware, Malta had kind of failed the test last year in June 2021 as far as convincing assessors that Malta was taking the fight against financial crimes seriously. They cited a number of things, you know, a lax attitude towards tax evasion, um, a lack of risk-based and analytical financial intelligence to help support police, um, lapses in ensuring that beneficial ownerships of entities are not overlapping, you know, so there were a number of issues and areas that Malta could improve in. If Malta has improved in them, then this June, 2022, Malta could be taken off the list. Quite good news for Maltese businesses. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been, you know, this, this grey listing issue has been this dark shadow that has loomed over a lot of debates in Malta, be they political or not, sometimes, um, even just from the matter of, you know, businesses and people who would want to start up um, um, some sort of financial future here. So definitely something to look forward to, definitely something that maybe we can um, ha be looking at from a very much more of a hopeful angle, hopefully, um, and definitely a flight that we were looking forward to um, seeing. <laughs> Unfortunately, moving on to our next um, story, a flight that hasn't happened really enough for three whole years. Um, Lasana, she says, body um, is still in a morgue in Malta three years after his murder. Um, just for a very quick context, Lasana Cesare is of course the 42 year old father of three who on this day in 2019 was gunned down um, 
basically in, 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 in Halfar on his way back from uh, watching a football match with friends. Um, the Maltese government, well, what seems like a, a, an, an age ago now, pre-COVID, um, had uh, offered to pay the costs associated with repatriating his body, you know, so that he could receive a proper burial in his home country, which is the Ivory Coast. Um, the body was released from burial um, uh, for burial by the courts in January 2020. Unfortunately, mere weeks later, of course, we all know what happened with the COVID-19 pandemic, and that kind of set things um, you know, it kind of disrupted a little bit uh, um, uh, the, the, the organization of it. I, of course, Ivory Coast is literally still a dark red list country as we speak. However, um, three years is an awfully long time, um, especially when we're talking about the very fact that his alleged killers are uh, still out on bail. So, you know, you have this whole context where three long years later, we've literally had a pandemic, we got into a pandemic, we solved it, we, we vaccinated, you know, 90% of the planet. Here we are, the case is still ongoing, the killers, the alleged killers are still out on bail, his body is still lying in the morgue at Mater Dei. Definitely not something that you'd want to, you know, see. Um, and in fact, a protest is happening right now, right? Yes, exactly. There actually is a, a bit of an event happening um, organized by Movement Graffiti to kind of mark the day that Lusana Sisse was murdered. But yes, it is very disappointing to kind of see that Malta's government hasn't made headway here. Now, I'm sure there's a million and one issues with COVID and being a dark red country. But, you know, like m the government does many, many things. Oftentimes, we just had a whole election season where lots of things were able to be held. So I would imagine that if the government really had its heart in this, it would find a way to repatriate, get in contact with the family. I'm sure the family, the Cesare family, would love to get Lasana's body back and give it, you know, the due burial process that they'd love to do. So, you know, it kind of, you know, says a lot about how serious the government is taking this. Let's not forget that the two alleged murderers behind this crime were AFM soldiers. Um, so whether that means that, you know, these were just lone rangers within the AFM or there's more of a serious issue within Malta's armed forces, you know, I hope the government does look into that as well. But first thing first, get the body back to the family. Moving on to um, a bit of an issue from St. Julian's in Spinola Bay. This is something that, you know, we often see every year where it seems like the issue is getting worse and worse. Massive swarms of purple jellyfish, aka mauve stingers, have appeared in Maltese waters again. Footage um, published by Love of Malta this morning shows you know, Spinola Bay and St. Julian's, a nice, beautiful little inlet, pretty much covered with jellyfish, purple jellyfish, so you really, really notice them in the sea. So definitely, if you were planning on going swimming in Spinola Bay anytime soon, hold your horses. Um, and if you have gone swimming and you were stung by one of these stingers, Love Amalda has a guide on how to treat sting treat stings by the jellyfish on loveamalta.com. We reached out to a local marine expert, Alan Day Dune, to understand kind of why we're seeing such large plumes, blooms of jellyfish in Malta. And he said, listen, this phenomenon, it's not exactly clear what's happening, but, you know, climate change could be a part of it. You know, different temperatures um, could lead to larger, you know, blooms of these jellyfish, um, as well as different generation of jellyfish. You know, you could have a first generation that lay their eggs and then, you know, the second generation appears. Either way, it seems like the jellyfish are going to be here for the next few days, weeks. So if you're planning to go swimming, definitely check the water before jumping in. Yeah, as in, you know, with these things, there's always a million and one variables that can, can affect it. The fact of the matter is, just like John said, hold off a little bit if you're swimming. We have, you know, a, a, a long, warm um, season ahead of us, so, like, we, we'll, we'll have enough time to swim, you know. Um, you don't need to go swimming in April, come on, like, it's not even Easter yet. Um, but rest assured that once summer, once, uh, summer comes, waters get warmer, traditionally, um, these jellyfish will start being a little bit more far and few in between. So that's definitely what I would recommend if you're going to be staying in Malta. Um, for summer. If you're planning on going abroad in summer, well, we have a new destination for you. Um, at least already there's one, um, and that's Madrid. Air Malta has, um, will be flying to Madrid for the first time in a decade, and the first flight already left um, and arrived two days ago. Um, so, the national airline will be flying to the Spanish capital uh, three times a week. So Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. So perfect if you want to take a cheeky weekend or if you just want to say, you know what, screw it, I'm off for a whole week. Um, it's part of over 
uh, 25 return flights per week to 18 key European destinations. So now you've got, you know, everywhere. Just in case you've always been going to London and Paris the way I do, <laughs> now you have Madrid as well as, a, as, a, as, a, um, um, as an option. This, of course, comes as it's also been reported that around 80% of Malta's uh, pre-pandemic routes are coming back finally. So this definitely looks like, you know, um, a busier, a busier summer is on the horizon. Of course, it is. Uh, it, it does bear saying that the airline still continues to struggle financially and is, you know, barely managing to stay afloat following the pandemic. But Finance Minister Clyde Caruana continues to, neg to negotiate for state aid, you know, while countless staff are are, 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 are are moved on and all of that. But at least this increase in destinations hopefully will lead to um, a little bit more movement, both from European side, but also from our own side of planning holidays. You know, it's so happy. I'm really happy to hear kind of, you know, new routes being announced, you know, kind of people getting back into normality. Let's be clear, Air Malta, as well as the Malta International Airport, have been calling for kind of an end to COVID-19 mitigation measures saying that it's severely impacting them so this is a great sign it shows that kind of we're moving in the right direction I've never been to Madrid so you know I, I might be looking into this I've been to Barcelona beautiful city Spanish culture is amazing the food is incredible so you know if you are looking for something a little bit different like David said that's not the London or the Paris Madrid should be on your list I think that brings us to the end of today's episode as always for myself and David have a evening full of love and